watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 or Cinema 40 fundamentally, please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 40 course, which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Cinema 40 thoroughly. Hey folks, welcome back to mographplus.com. It's Khazri here with you. In this lesson, we'll learn about carpet shader in Arnold for Cinema 4D, which can be used to create realistic carpet shaders. You can download the project files for this lesson down below in the description. Let's jump right in and create a new Arnold carpet shader. Assign it to the shader ball and middle click on it to open up its network editor. And let's run the IPR. Car paint, like a standard surface shader, has a base, a specular, and a coat layer with some additional parameters and a flakes layer. I don't intend to explain every single parameter in the car paint shader as most of them are the same as in a simple standard surface shader. In the car paint shader, you notice if you click on this load preset button, there are a few car paint presets uh, like black, uh, metallic blue with flakes. Metallic red. Yellow. And so on. For now, let's use this metallic blue with flakes preset. Car paint shader has four layers, base, specular, flakes, and coat. Combining these four layers, we can produce all sorts of realistic car paint shaders. First, let's zero out the specular weight, the flakes density, and the clear coat weight. At the very bottom, we have the base layer. Then we add the rough specular reflection using the specular layer and you notice the IOR for this layer is set to 6. That's why we get this metallic look. Then we add the flakes if necessary. And finally the clear coat layer which adds a sharp reflection on top of everything. For now zero out the specular weight, the flakes density and the clear coat weight again. The base layer controls the base or diffuse color, weight, and roughness of the shader. For a metallic car paint, you normally have a much darker shade of your defined specular color as your base color. Then on top of our base layer, we add our rough specular layer. For now, let's set the specular weight back to 1 again. To get that metallic car paint look, you notice the specular color is a brighter, more saturated version of the base color. It's not a white simple color. If we were aiming for a normal paint, the specular color would have been a white color. You notice here the roughness is set to 0.5. That's why we get this broad specular reflections and the IOR is set to 6 which helps us to get closer to a metallic car paint. If I lower it to a normal value like 1.5, we immediately lose that metallic look. So let's set it back uh, to around 6. To achieve that car paint look, we do need a clear coat layer. So go to the uh, coat section and increase its weight to 1. And this gives us that sharp specular reflection layer on top of everything. You realize this is a simple sharp reflective layer with roughness set to 0.01 and IOR to 1.5. And finally we can start adding flakes using the flakes section by increasing the density to something more than 0. In this case let's try maybe 0.4 which is a default value. And we can control how these flakes look using this set of parameters. 
For now, let's turn off the uh, flakes again and get back to the specular section to talk about a few parameters that you might not be quite familiar with. And by that, I mean the flip-flop and the light facing color parameters. Flip-flop allows you to control the specular color based on the viewing angles. So if you want, you can have different specular colors on the parallel and perpendicular faces to your viewing direction. And this can be used to mimic a pearlescent effect. To do that, let's add a ramp RGB node. And connect it to the flip-flop color. In the ramp RGB node, change the type to U and let's change the black color to a saturated red and the white to a saturated yellow. So now the parallel faces are having this red specular color and the perpendicular faces having a yellowish specular reflections. And you can control the exact way these colors appear, the exact angle, the transition between the two, or even add more color using the ramp RGB node. Obviously, you would want to use more subtle transitions and colors. Let's change the red color to the original cyan color. and the yellow color to this bright pink color. There you have it. Uh, then we have this light facing color which modulates the specular reflection colors based upon light sources. So if a section of the geometry is facing a light source, it would get the color that you define in the light facing color as its specular color. Uh, let's see how that works. Uh, let's change the light facing color to this bright green. Now, because the fall off parameter right now is set to one, we don't see any contribution from the light facing color. So let's set the fall off 2.3. Now immediately this green reflection comes to play. Let's temporarily set the intensity of our Arnold sky to 0.1. Add a new Arnold point light and position it as you like. Set its radius to something like 0.05. In the IPR, make sure the render camera is camera 01. Now, if you run the IPR and move the light around, you notice how this green color appears only where the geometry faces the light source. For now, let's turn off this light and set the intensity of the Arnold sky back to 1. This fall off parameter here controls the fall off rate of the light facing color of the specular reflection. The higher the value, the narrower the region. So at 1, you only get the flip flop color as the color of the specular reflections. And as you decrease it towards zero, you start to blend in the light facing color as well. At this point, let's add some flakes. I'm going to increase the flakes density to around 0.4. You notice you normally use the same color of the specular uh, reflections for the color of the flakes as well. But because the IR value here is higher, around 100, you can see the flakes independently from the specular layer. In the flakes section, uh, you notice we have this 
flip-flop, light-facing color, and falloff, which are operating exactly like the same set of parameters in the specular section, but uh, in this case for the flakes. To see how they work, let's set the flakes color to white and connect the same ramp RGB node to the flakes flip-flop. and use the same green color as the light facing color for the flakes. And obviously decrease the fall off to around 0.3. Now let's see what we get. Now we have modulated the flakes color using flip flop and light facing parameters. So the flakes that are oriented towards a light source, uh, they are right now green. The flakes at the glancing angles are pink and the parallel flakes to the viewing direction are blue because of the ramp RGB node that we have connected to the flip-flop parameter of the flakes. For now, let's set the flakes color to red so we can take a look at the parameters available, available in the uh, flakes section and disconnect the ramp RGB from the uh, flakes flip-flop and make sure light facing and flip-flop colors are set to white. and set the fall off back to the default of one. This scale value scales the flake structure up or down, smaller values zoom out of the map, giving a larger number of flakes. Right now the scale is set to 0.001 and we can actually see the individual flakes. If increased to something like uh, 0.005, uh, we get even bigger flakes. So it all depends on the scene and the uh, scale of your scene and you can basically uh, change the scale based on how the flakes look. You normally want them to be very, very small. Um, we can set the scale actually to zero for this scene to get really small flakes if we wanted to. For now, let's set it to 0.005. Density controls the density of the flakes. There will be no flakes if it is set to zero. And as we increase the value towards one, we get more and more flakes. And the surface is fully covered with flakes at one. Let's use 0.4 for now. Layer specifies the number of flake layers. The flakes at a deep layer are covered by the ones closest to the surface. When set to one, we only get one layer of flakes. At two, we have two layers. And at three, three layers, one on top of another. Let's set it back to one for now. Normal randomized randomizes the orientation of the flakes. At lower values like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, the flakes have roughly the same orientation. And at values closer to 1, the flakes will be oriented more randomly. For now, set the randomized parameter to 0.3 and zero out the scale. And set the flake color to the same cyan color as the specular color. Let's quickly add a new car paint shader and connect it to the beauty port. You can load different presets and see how they use the parameters available in the car paint shader to achieve them. For example, let's load this metallic red preset you notice it doesn't have flakes. We can simply increase the flakes density to something like 0.5 and use our bright red specular color as the flakes color as well. And set the scale to zero so we get smaller flakes. And let's see what we get. And here we have this metallic red car paint with flakes. And to get rid of these artifacts, uh, you can increase the specular samples to something like four in your render settings. 
uh, we are rendering with default render settings right now so that's why we get these artifacts down there so that's about car paint shader in arnold for cinema 4d see you next time Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from ografplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D fundamentally, please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 4D course, which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly.